So welcome everyone to UPA Live. I'm Nate with BYU and uh, today is going to be awesome. I don't know about you guys, but I think food photography, okay, there's two things. One, food photography, you go to different places and you're like, oh, that looks awful. I do not, I don't <laughs> want to eat anything here. And then you go to other places and they have good pictures and you're like, that looks amazing. So all of Darren's work that I've seen looks amazing and makes it look really, really good. And so, uh, Darren, I would love before for the members that don't know you, just kind of introduce yourself a little bit. What got you into photography? And then he's going to teach us some good tips and tricks about food photography, how to make it look good. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. So Darren, go ahead and take it away. Well, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Darren Van Dyke. I'm the videographer, photographer for dining services. And yes, I only work for dining services at Virginia Tech. Um, <laughs> uh, and so uh, a little bit of my background is I actually came from the video side of things. So I went to school for filmmaking. Um, and then when gradu after graduation, I freelanced for about nine years and did a little bit of everything, you know, mostly commercials, uh, a couple feature films, short films, music videos, reality shows, a um, little of everything and all of it. Um, and then in 2018, uh, a job opened here at Virginia Tech uh, for dining services, and I applied and got this job. Uh, so very thankful to have gotten it. It's been awesome to, you know, be doing all these things and being a part of dining. I think it's probably the most creative space I could be at on this campus. And so it's been awesome. Um, and honestly, I didn't really do much of photography other than vacations until I got this job. <laughs> As I said, I came from the video side of things. So uh, first thing I knew when I was going to apply for this job was, of course, it's dining. I'm going to do food photography at some point, right? Um, so I went and started just uh, looking through all kinds of magazines I could find at Barnes and Noble, you know, looking online and just trying to study food photography and food photos, trying to see what the lighting was, see the, you know, how they were like pulling textures in mm -hmm. or colors in or just how they were just setting things up in general. And so that's kind of how I got my, my brain to start working on uh, becoming a food photographer because I did not apply as a food photographer. <laughs> um so so yeah so with that um you know coming from video uh, of course i already had some experience uh trying to make images with a camera and lighting um so when it came to the lighting i literally was just trying to look and see like i said you know what am i seeing here what does it look like and i feel like for anybody looking to get into food photography still just kind of thinking of the the you know basics that we've all learned you know the three points of lighting your key your fill your backlight and then you know keeping that in mind as you're looking at photos and studying photos and trying to see how that is um you know it's the same as if you were to uh you know i guess this is how my brain works anyways like you know doing sort of still life sort of like when you used to like draw or paint and you just you know do the circles <clears throat> and the squares and the triangles and just seeing how the light falls on things um so that's what i did is just really try to study and look at that so for me um it also depends it's like as far as how my lighting goes uh will depend on what the project is for because sometimes we have special events that are like you know the super high events and those you know really try to you know make sure we we go all out for those photos and some other ones is sort of like well we just we just need a nice good clean image so i don't have to like try to too many different things with lighting just kind of give a nice basic one um so like for an example of what i'm saying on that let's see can... hey darren while you're pulling that up i'm just gonna yeah. go go ahead and pull up, up i was just gonna tell everyone feel free to put your questions or anything in the chat and then i'll kind of field those with darren and uh we'll go from there so as we're going along don't be afraid to ask any questions and darren will get them answered for us Can everybody see that? Mm -hmm. So like this photo here is one, you know, we do a lot of grab and go and we actually make grab and go on campus here. 
And for those shots, there's so many things that we have. And also this is mostly for back of the house because they like to make a sort of a catalog to give out to all the dining centers so they can choose what they want to, to get for their, their grab and goes. And so for this, you know, I just use a nice um, white backdrop. I uh, usually have just one big light off to this side, nice, you know, soft box with a strobe light. And then I have a bounce um, on the field side, uh, just a, a poster board. And uh, depending too on, you know, what uh, the packaging and other things are, I have another piece of diffusion that I will bring in um, to put in front of the, the key light to help soften it down a little bit as well. And I mean, that's literally pretty much my setup for those so that I can just uh, kind of go through them. Like there's another one, strawberries. And this is actually this part over here with the corn and cheese and chicken would sit on top of the um, the salad part and it's actually packaged along with that. So just kind of separated it for that. But, you know, in this, you know, you're just kind of trying to look for the glares and try to make sure they're not taking over the, you know, food and everything. You know, you're going to see a little bit of glare, but just try to make sure it doesn't take over the shot. And uh, that's pretty much how those uh, go for that. And then when we go to, like, the one that we use for this, um, this is for a chef's competition. So the chef was actually, this is his plate for a competition uh, that he was doing and so for that one I was like okay we're going to go out all out for this one really you know try to make it really nice and look really uh, really good and so with that he told me like he had a ravioli pork dish and <laughs> he didn't it was kind of like he didn't really explain it to me it's just sort of like saying um uh, I got a cheeseburger <laughs> and I'm like okay uh, but not given a lot of the details of like, well, how's the cheeseburger made? Like it would, would so uh, knowing that, that, you know, the brightest thing I was going to have was probably going to be the raviolis, you know, just kind of went with, I wanted them to really stick out. Um, so going into that, you know, I was like, you know, let's do a, you know, a lot more, a lot of dark colors around it. And that way it, the raviolis really stick out in the shot. So that's kind of what I was going for there. And then you know, wanted to add textures with the wood um, and the backdrop, just kind of let it be black, let it kind of fade off. Um, and then he did mention uh, having basil to go along with it, which is great because most food ends up being kind of brownish or yellowish or always in that kind of family. So it's nice to be able to add any other colors you can get in there. So when he, when he said he was adding that, I was like, okay, I want to grab a green napkin to kind of like go in there with with that sort of help complement uh, the basil and maybe even help that green stick out of that yellow you know when you when you see that napkin and you look over that green might stick out a little bit more now than it, would so, if it was up there so Darren are these all choices that you're making kind of on set during the shoot or like as he's telling you about okay it's ravioli i'm having basil and you talked about grabbing some like the green uh napkin mm -hmm. are those choices that you're making before you get there or is this kind of something that you're doing while you're there and you're like oh that'd be nice to to throw in uh, it can be a little bit of both at times um for this one it, it was a planned ahead of time um i grabbed the you know like i said when he told me that i everything that he had told me ingredients wise and how he was doing it i was like the only thing i'm seeing stick out uh, other than like I said the usual browns and yellows and things was was the basil's green and so with that I kind of get to plan that one ahead of time going okay we're gonna I'm gonna go buy this and I actually bought a uh, cream colored one as well as far as the napkins just in case you know it didn't quite work out as well as I wanted I had a cream colored one too that if I wanted to I could keep it cream or edit it to be a different color later um, but thankfully the green one worked out great I think it turned out really good with that one yeah, absolutely. Uh, a couple other questions. Austin's asking if you bring your own props for backdrops or just use surfaces on hand. Like, is this something that you created or is this in a restaurant or or kind of somewhere on campus with this texture? Or are you creating that? 
Uh, so at times, once again, it could be a mix of both. With this one, I created this. So these are B flats backdrops. Um, I find that they're really, really good, and they have a you know a different tone on one side and the other. So like this is a dark brown on one. You flip it over, it's like a lighter wood color on the other side. Oh, nice. And you can like, yeah, you can just bring them in and out. Let's see if I, actually I can probably see. So yeah, this is the actual test shoot that I was doing for that one, you can see. So yeah, I have like the V flats here. I even got some black silverware. So we did do one where I had the black fork in the ravioli and the ravioli cut halfway open. So you can see what was inside of it, mm -hmm. but the chef himself didn't really want to use that one. So, but uh, once again, I wanted to keep it black because I wanted the ravioli to be the number one thing that stood out in the photo. Um, but yeah, you can see how I have everything set up here. I got my strobe bouncing off this wall uh, just to create the entire, you know, feel. Um, have my gel with my orange light just to kind of come in and give another little sprinkle of light and color to it. Um, another like little feel off to try to crap, sort of grab the front part of the uh, bowl. And the thing is, I tested this in my studio closet that I have, <laughs> um, yeah. and then had to take this to uh, a test kitchen to actually take the actual photo. So then after doing this, I had to rethink, okay, well now how am I going to recreate this? Because I don't have this white wall next to me that I'm using as a fill uh when i get there like so for that i i end up having i want to say it's like a 40 inch umbrella with a diffusion on it is what the the one that bouncing off the wall became um and then everything else of course i could bring the rest of that but yeah i, I love this i think it's fascinating like because you see <laughs> you see the end photo and you don't realize like then you see some behind the scenes you're like this looks nothing like how the photo looks so i mean it's just, <laughs> yeah. just just awesome that you're able to to do that in such a unique space um a couple other questions i think i saw a photo uh for this question robert is asking what tools do you use to style food uh yes so when it comes to styling um like so here's some some tools that we have like the, uh, the paintbrush there can help to sort of, you can brush things away, crumbs and other things, so that you're not like getting your hands all over everything and making bigger messes possibly. Uh, same with like the Q-tips. Um, you know, when you have like, especially food that is kind of a little greasy or has a little juices falling out and you don't really want that in the photo, uh, you can take those to kind of just sort of get in the little nooks and just kind of clean it up a little bit. Um, some pins to like when you do sandwiches and things like that, if you want something to be pinned down. Uh, you can also use toothpicks and other things like that. Um, then I also have like makeup sponges uh, because they're like little triangles. So if you need to prop something up just a little bit, you can just sort of bring them in and just help prop it up a little. Uh, and of course, tweezers to, you know, place things or take out things. Uh, same with like scissors if you need to cut things as well shorten them or anything. Uh, so that's some of the tools I use. Also, because I mean, we, you know, we have executive chefs, I, you know, I'll also lean on them. You know, they, they went to school, they've learned how to plate and they're their artists themselves. So, you know, once again, I'll, I'll kind of lean to them first on it. And then sometimes I will go in and, and change things. And sometimes I just let it be what they've created. It, you know, just once again, depends on uh, the project that we're doing. Awesome. Uh, another question, how much time do you take to, or have to set up your shots? Are, are you ever like on a time crunch or do you typically have like, all right, I got all afternoon to do this. Like how much time are you usually allotted for these? And, and like, how hard is it to work with food before it doesn't look good anymore? Yes. Yeah. That's, that's usually the harder part. So like being, you know, Virginia Tech and being, you know, a university, um, they want all the food to be real. So it's like when I take a picture of a milkshake, that really is a milkshake. It's not mashed potatoes. Mm -hmm. um, so like we do have a limited time trying to get some some of those shots. So with that, like usually when I do them, I try to make sure that we have multiples 
you know, if it's especially for an event of any kind, like let's have all the plates that we can have for it. And it depends on, you know, what toppings are going to go bad first. I usually try to tell the chefs, you know, wait for me to say I'm done with this one before going and grabbing the next one. And because, you know, like if you go and make a cheeseburger, but that's not the first thing I'm going to take a picture of, the cheese is going to start to look bad before I get to it. Um, so that's where I work with them, trying to time things out a little bit better. And usually like, I'll plan for no less than an hour session to try to do the food photography because I usually do more than one plate. Mm -hmm. And then, um, yeah, like I said, just try to try to time it out right. I've also got like a heat gun and some other things to try to rejuvenate if I can. Uh, another trick I'll try to use like for like food, like a hamburger. Um, when I'm doing multiple hamburgers and maybe the chefs have, you know, kind of gone a little too far. I was like, oh, they got one out before I, uh, was done with the other one to try to bring it back a little bit like I might take some honey or take some uh, maybe even honey and water and just mix it up a little bit and try to you know make it look a little more greasy try to bring it back to life a little bit and the look um, stuff like that so where where did you learn kind of those tips and like tricks for shooting real food uh, like was it trial and error was it part of reading that you talked about before like just trying to ingest all that you can about food photography uh, what was your process in figuring those things out uh for me mostly uh trial and error for a lot of it um there were some things you know you research and you find other people's you know ways they do things but a lot of it became like just just trying to figure it out myself um like i know there's uh, another tricks, a lot of tricks that people try to use for like um, water. You know, you want those water droplets on mm -hmm. your food or on a glass and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, I've I just experimented with different things. I remember one person I had seen said to use a certain type of hairspray. I tried it and it didn't seem like it was working to me. And then for some rare reason, I just thought, well, what if I just try a deodorant? So I took a glass, took some deodorant, and I just wiped the deodorant all over the glass. And I took a napkin and just wiped the deodorant off so it was nice and clear again. And then sprayed it, and sure enough, all the water just stuck on there and gave me wow. the look I was looking for. And I was like, okay, deodorant will work. No, oh, that's <laughs> awesome. Hey, so now, any, any little uh, tricks like that as we go through these photos, yeah, feel free to share if, you, if you're willing. Like, that's, that's yeah. really interesting. I never yeah. would have thought to use deodorant to to do that. Yeah, and now every time when you smell Old Spice, you can think of a burger, you know. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, where are we at? <laughs> yeah, with some things here. Uh, and, and then while you're while you're going to a different photo too, um, kind of going back to the question on time. How long does it take for you to typically set up one of these shoots? Like before you start shooting, whether it's, you know, getting the lighting, the styling, um, kind of getting your set together. How long is, how long does that typically take you now? So just, it's this kind of just actually comes from when I was doing freelance video work, but I um, would always just give myself an hour if I can. I'll give myself an hour that way I can get in, set up, uh, you know, check things, you know, be able to, you know, if I have a rush day, try to calm myself down a little bit before I take the photos. So if I can, I try to give myself an hour just to get everything set up. Um, okay. Okay. I think I, I might've misunderstood before, or maybe I didn't. Are you saying, so you take, give yourself about an hour to get set up and then you do the shoot for about an hour or are you, were you just saying that typically you just give yourself an hour to get there and get prepared? Uh, yeah, so it's a both actually. I usually give myself, try to give myself an hour if I can, um, no less than 30 minutes to try to come and set up. And then usually the shoots are about an hour long because like I said, we'll do multiple plates. Um, so I usually go for an hour at least for the photo shoots. And then of course, packing up and leaving after that. Yeah, cool, awesome. Uh, another question from Jeff. So do you have a site uh, to share with all the behind the scenes styling tips and tricks, kind of like what you were talking about? Do you have anything like that or do you go to any place? Um, I don't have anything like that myself. Um, I have found a couple 
uh, YouTube uh, sites that uh, they do food photography. Um, and uh, that's that's actually with one of the this part right here. There was a lady I had watched and she mentioned a bunch of these and a bunch of other tools um, on her YouTube channel that she used. And I thought, oh, those, those sound really good. Um, so I can I can try to uh, find that. It's been a while since I've seen one of her shows, yeah. but I, I can uh, get back to you guys with the link to one of hers. Awesome. Uh, but yeah, okay, thanks, uh, Darren. That'd be great. I, I'm just always interested in seeing all the things that it takes to make it look edible and like you mm -hmm. said make it look fresh and you know ice cream that doesn't melt you know and all that but at least you're using real food at your site so yeah that's cool. i think yeah. that's the impressive part is it's all real food yeah i mean it, it's definitely awesome that i can at least i can tell everybody when they look at something that you know it's the real thing it's not an imitation you know um even with like this one here too like you know, usually like on, on other things that'd probably be like motor oil or something, you know, but that's yeah. actually our uh, olive oil right there that we're using. Um, awesome. Do you, another question from Randy, do you start with a basic lighting setup and then tweak it for the dish or do you have kind of a different setup for each? Like what's your approach to lighting something? So, yeah, so um Basically, when I first started, I kind of just had a, a very uh, basic way of doing it, which is literally I had one light and a bounce board, and that's all I brought. Um, like this picture, see if it'll load. This picture is just that it's one light and a bounce board. And and then, you know, with it too, I, I, I made sure to tell like the chefs, and sometimes I do it, and like I said, sometimes they do it, but when it comes to taking photos, especially for university, we want to show everything on the plate or everything in the sandwich so that when someone is trying to order it, like they can literally look and that's exactly everything that's going to be in their sandwich or on their bowl. And it also helps for like, you know, if you have any allergies, if you are a foreign student who doesn't speak English very well or can't read English very well, like you see the picture and that's exactly what you're getting uh, right there. Um, so for a lot of things, I usually do this setup of just, uh, like I said, one light, a bounce board. Sometimes I'll bring in the diffusion to go with the key just to soften it down a lot more too, not be so harsh. Um, but that's, that's pretty much my basic that I go to a lot. No, I like that. I think that's, probably an aspect of uh, food photography that we take for granted is visually seeing what we're going to get. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was just, I was just traveling out of the country and uh, only spoke a little bit of the language. And when I would go eat, I can't tell you how much easier it was to pick something that I could see a good photo of, as opposed to either just a menu or a photo that I'm like, I don't even know what that is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a huge, huge part of it that I don't think we we often think about. So are you talk are, kind of going back to what you're saying? Are you talking with the chef specifically for them to create the food that way and kind of dish it that way? Or are is that kind of what they already do? Like, how does that work? Do you need to make adjustments and have them redo things? Uh, yeah, sometimes they will make adjustments. So usually, you know, it's like you know, if you go to Chick-fil-A and you get a Chick-fil-A sandwich, you know, the basic is just buns, pickles, and the chicken. And the pictures, a lot of times you can still see the pickles, but when you actually go out and buy it, you, the pickles are hidden underneath everything and you don't see it. Um, and usually so, they're all like stacked on top of each other. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, it's one of those things that I've talked to the chefs, like, you know, I, I know this is how it's going to come off the line, but for the photo, we need to see, we need to be able to see all the ingredients. So sometimes, you know, maybe the tomato might be cut a little thicker than it is actually, you know, on the actual sandwich or something is pulled out like the pickles or something, just so we can actually see them, even though it might not look that way when you first get it as the client, you know, eating it. Uh, but, you know, at least in the picture, you can see it and know it's going to be there. Great. Love it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I said, the, my basic has always been one light and a bounce board and some diffusion. That's pretty much my basic and if if you don't have lighting 
you know, you don't have any strobes or, or speed lights or anything, you know, it's the same as a lot of other things. You can try to find a window. Um, I know a lot of times that when I first started before I, we got all our gear in, you know, I would go try to find a window in our dining centers uh, with a table and I would just get my diffusion and I would just put that over, you know, let the sun come in, put the diffusion up and then just let the sun be my light. Um, you know, just getting like a five in one reflector. And once again, just use a poster board if you need for some fill. Uh, and you can just do something that simple with it. I think that just is another kind of uh, evidence of it's not necessarily the equipment that you have, but it's it's the knowledge behind it. It kind of is the power behind the photo, not necessarily the camera or the type of lights or what you have, but just, man, that the knowledge of what to do is far more valuable, I think, than than the equipment. You know, yeah, I think you're saying I, even I, if you don't have lights, you know. Yeah, I mean, for me you know it, it took me a while uh when i was doing video to try to like get everything straight in my head but the best thing that anybody ever told me was you know to learn lighting just grab one light and just use one light and just see what you get you know you can find like a dark room or a dim room and just see what that light's doing you know move it around and then once you've got that one take another one put somewhere else move it around and just see what the light's doing to try to like get that in your mind clear yeah uh, another question about your lighting from Randy um, asking what's in your lighting kit that you take with you. Do you keep it simple? Uh, do you take filters, scrims? What lights do you use? And, uh, and a shout out. He loves your work. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so pretty much this photo. Oh, there you go. So I got the Godox 600s because, like I said, we also do you know portraits and other things like that as well. So I got those. I got the Godox uh, 200 AD and the little V1 as well. Um, so depending on what the shoot is, you know, will depend on what I bring. Usually, uh, like right now, it's pretty much the you know one strobe, uh, the six 600 and the 200. And usually I'll just bring those two uh, with things I'm doing right now. Um, and, you know, using one for a key, one for a back, and then using a bounce board for fill. Great. Um, that's kind of where I'm at now. Um, I feel like I missed something else in that question. Is there something else in Africa? Uh, do you take any scrims or filters? I mean, you talked about your bounce board. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and, and then it, something for diffusion. Yeah, I have a, a five one reflector that I have, um, and I bring that with me all the time too. And you, like I said, use the diffusion most of the time with that one. Um, so it'd yeah. be like the key lights here. I put the diffusion there, and then and sometimes I even take if you play the diffusion, if you bend it a little bit, you can see how the light will shift and change just by bending your diffusion. Yeah, awesome. You have the snoot up there too, but oh uh, yeah, snoot, yeah. How, how often do you use a snoot? I mean, you're trying to sometimes light pretty small areas and you want the light focused, but. Yeah, so the snoot, um, I've only been using more recently. Um, and like I said, you know, that, that depends on what it's for. So usually that one would be for like a real special event or a chef's competition. I'll use, uh, you know, I might use the snoot for what they got, but otherwise it's still just sort of the basic lighting with soft boxes. Yeah. And one more time, could you go into a little bit more detail? Um, so going to that image that you actually took uh, from that behind the scenes, I, I love that little, it's just a tiny hint of that warm glow from that gel on the dish that really mimics like sunset window light coming in, like kind of give your thought process behind like what made you think to do that? How, like, <laughs> the the why behind it, and and um, what it does. Well, yeah. So, like, I wanted to, I wanted to give it that little extra uh, ping of light in there. You know, sometimes when you when you see uh, photos of other things, you always see it sort of like that edge highlight, and it's kind of like I kind of want to play with sort of giving an edge highlight to um the ravioli in this and on top of that i wanted to 
make it warm uh, to once again, everything else feels kind of cold. And then you kind of bring the warmth in when you have that warm orange coming into the ravioli. Um, so I just thought it really helped make, you know, guide your light or guide your eyes to where, you know, we wanted you to go to look at for this photo. Yeah, love love it. Just the small details that make it really, really pop. Like even just the that warm highlight on the back right side of the bowl from there looks really yeah. cool. Yeah, I mean, I think it helps everything to sort of stick out a little bit more having having it be a little warmer. Yeah, great. Thank you. Yeah. And then like kind of did something similar. You can see here, like we did, we have a gingerbread house competition that the students get to do. Um, and so this year I decided to try to do a backdrop for it. Um, usually we just sort of took pictures of them making them and having fun as groups. But I was like, you know, let's do it like we're doing plates and let's try to like have a little more fun with with these cool gingerbread houses that the students make. And so, um, you know, with that, of course, I went with wanting to do like a snowy um, bottom bottom on it, a uh, tabletop, and then the backdrop, because I knew we were going to have so many photos, you know, I wanted to have a day and a night version. Let's see. And then with that, of course, using gels to kind of bring in the night and the sort of the sunrise kind of feel. I had to go along with the houses. And then... And then you can see the setup is this right here. So I got one light bouncing into a, a poster board. I have the snoot to kind of help highlight anything. And then basically like my, you know, umbrella as a sun, so to say. So that was kind of where all the pink and blue was coming from was right there. Uh, do you have any thoughts on like focal length? It looks like you shoot pretty wide with those. Do you have any mm -hmm. thoughts on focal length and what seems to work best with food photography, like shooting wider and closer or longer and tighter? Like, what, do you have any thoughts on that? Um, so, yeah, from for most of the stuff, I stick between like probably 24 to 50 uh -huh. uh, in, in what I'm doing for food photography. And then once again, it, it becomes sort of what is it we're we're taking a photo of and, you know, you know, what's the purpose for it? So, I mean, like for, for something like these, like I'll probably just, you know, probably do it around 24 or so, you know, just have everything in focus. Not to worry about that depth when you get a 50 on. Um, and then, of course, for ones like these, like this one, I would use like, you know, a 50 for it. Yeah. Uh, make it look nice maybe even maybe even the 35 just depends on what the plate may be mm -hmm. sometimes too um i've had chefs in the past give me a literally give me a plate that's bigger than my backdrop and then me trying to figure out how am i going to make this work they're like this plate is bigger than the backdrop i brought uh, <laughs> um, I, don't, I don't know what time it is everywhere else but i don't know if you guys have already eaten lunch but it's like pre-lunch here right now it's uh <laughs> these, these photos are looking good yeah and then like something different um was like these these were all done with fishing wire and uh that's a clear piece of plastic for the uh, sauces so i wanted to do this all in one photo originally um but i just didn't have things to try to get it that way so i i just did everything every part individually and so for that i literally just took two stands had a table underneath in case you know something falls and then um just took two pieces of fishing wire to go across uh the stands and then i would just place the food on them and then from there i just like changed my camera angle you know low high off to the side a little this way um, to try to like find uh something interesting with it and this is they're all cutouts you can kind of manipulate afterwards um and then also you can see where like whoop, a little yo-yo going on here um for like the you know the vegetables here I, I sprayed some water on them to try to help give a little more texture a little more life you know i think it's nice when you look at like vegetables and they have the little spritz of water not only is it a texture but it also like makes you think it's clean it's been washed um 
and you know like a tomato is can be juicy so it kind of gives you that juicy feel as well with the tomato so i think it's it's nice to like put that on on vegetables and fruits yeah great then another small detail that makes a huge difference all right this thing's going crazy on me all right there you go <laughs> um and then like i said once again like uh for sometimes it's the chefs i'll just let them do you know, especially if it's a special event, I just let the chefs do their creativity and then I'll try to decorate around their creativity. Mm -hmm. So like, um, not that one. So like for this one, the chef, you know, did all of this. Um, and then uh, this is for uh, an Asian meal. So, you know, we wanted to have sort of a bamboo plate. And then I thought to continue with the textures of that, you know, but not to take away from that, I would like do a black wood uh, for the tabletop on it. And just kind of go with that. Like I said, it's kind of went with his, let his uh, decoration, let, let his plating be, you know, the thing that sticks out. And then similar to like this one as well, like that's, you know, all the chef. And then this was for our 150th celebration. Um, and so with that in our uh, graphics already by our graphic photographer, she was already using a lot of these like circles and things in her graphics. So we kind of just threw them down to use in the uh, photos as well to tie everything together. And this one was still one of my favorite for an event because <laughs> um, this was a uh, mystery theater dinner. Um, and so for like this one, we had to uh, like, we were creating like a museum kind of space that everybody was coming to. And then somebody's supposed to st stolen a jewel and all these things, all the characters. Um, and being that it's supposed to be like a museum that we we're going to, I wanted to like make things look like a painting. So it kind of has an oil painting look, if you can see there, that I added to it. And then this is one of the characters who's a basketball player and one of our dishes. And it's trying to, trying to put the story of the event itself within everything as well. Uh, it was kind of fun to do that one. Yeah, that's awesome. This has been a fun one I did recently too, trying to do splash photography. <laughs> yeah, so Jeff has a question about uh, your process of doing that. Um, mm -hmm. He's asking if you use a motion trigger. I don't know if you want to go through kind of your process and uh, yeah. what it took to to take those. And yeah, the uh, sadly I don't have a motion trigger. I want one. <laughs> That's on my my list of other things to get in the future. Um, so for this one, I actually have the Canon 6D Mark II, and you can set it on a timer to do like up to like 10 photos uh, on a burst. Um, so I just set that timer for 10, 10 shots, and then I'm literally just holding uh, an object in my hand. It took me a couple of times. I did test with water first, um, and I just took a couple of different things, dropping it in, throwing it in to see what I could get out of it, and then try and keep in my mind that when I go to do the real thing, it's going to be milk, so it'll be a little bit thicker. So I got to think about that. And funny enough, I think it was like, of all the things I threw in there, I just took one of these just off of here, off your water bottle, threw it in there, and got that. <laughs> so I was like, okay, this this gives me the right amount of splash that I want. Because some of the other ones, it would just kind of do the shoot up and come straight down and not really go out. Uh, but this really helped, you know, make it go outwards. Okay, so um, how many uh, how many tests did you need to run before you finally got to one that worked? <laughs> Thankfully, it wasn't that that long. I think it probably was like 15, 30 minutes of just throwing things in there. Because I have like fake ice cubes for drinks as well. Okay. So I was trying fake ice cubes, uh, just trying a bunch of different things. Yeah, that, that was a fun one. I look forward to doing more. more uh, uh messes <laughs> oh and here's yeah you can see the 
Like that's what it actually looks like there. Uh, that's cool. That was making a big mess. Yeah. Um, I guess, is there any other questions? I'm hoping I've answered everybody's, what everybody was hoping to get out of this. <laughs> like I've been rambling a little bit. No, no, no. This has been awesome information. Really good information. Love seeing the behind the scenes. Glad you put that stuff in there. Uh, really cool tips and tricks. Uh, does anybody else have any more questions before we we kind of wrap up? And if you do, feel free. You can just jump in if you want, or you can type in the chat. I've got, um, Darren, I think it'd be interesting to hear also, I remember like talking to you at Symposium about your, um, your work, and it's just like such a unique um, position compared to a lot of us being on like the marketing team. But I, I remember also just being really impressed with like the variety of stuff you do. Cause I know I remember talking to you and you're being like, yeah, people think I just do food. And we looked at these, some beautiful <laughs> food photos, but I've yeah. seen you on like, uh, taking like construction photos of like the new dining halls, doing events, holiday stuff. Like you said, you're doing, mm. um, themed things for, um, for certain events. Like, can you talk a little bit about you do a lot of food, but also what else do you end up doing with dining services? Because I thought that was really impressive, just like the amount of things that you cover. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that's really cool. Oh, oh, there you go. Uh, yeah, so for dining services, it, it's, it is kind of like a little of everything that everybody else does with food on top of it in some ways. So like... Um, you know, I, I still do headshots, uh, portraits, uh, uh, the remodels and constructions for all the new dining centers and just refreshing some dining center shops. Um, we have special events. I mean, they literally try to get us almost doing two to three special events a, a week, which is kind of crazy. So some of them get a higher level and some get a lower level. Of like, okay, we're going to go to that one. We're not going to go to this one. Uh um, but yeah, and, you know, we want to get stu students interactions as well, showing behind the scenes of what we do for a lot of things like we, um, on top of that doing um, uh, like in house things as well so like, you know, times I'll be filming training videos like here. Uh, next month I'll be filming a cash register so that people can show somebody how to use a cash register machine because we just updated them to a new system and. Uh, we'll show like how to properly use a knife and how to do things like that as well and chef showing how to cook things and do things so it's it's a lot of a lot of different things more than it is more than just food photography no that's awesome thank you uh adam's got a question about how many shoots do you typically do per day or week so i try to keep it as, as one shoot a day but sometimes with everybody's schedule, it becomes like, okay, everybody's free only on Wednesday. Okay. So we end up doing like uh, two, two of the things I think I've had as max of three. Uh, but usually in a week, shoot wise, I'll probably depend on, man, it could be three to four shoots in a week, you know, because one might be going out to take a headshots and the other one's, taking an LTO photo for another dining center. And so, yeah, it could be like three to four photo shoots in a week and try to keep it one a day. Sometimes it gets crazy, but try to keep it as one a day. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Um, let's see. And then Chelsea's asking about how many plates do you typically have per session? Like if you're doing uh, something for one of the restaurants on campus or one of the places to eat, like, do you focus mainly on one plate? Do you try to get through a bunch of different dishes that they have? What, what do you try to do there? Yeah, uh, I mean, for shops and or just for the dining centers, usually, I'd say it's probably close to like five. Mm-hmm uh for like especially like ltos and things like that one or no no it's like just go ahead and knock out all five plates that you're going to have for it and we'll just knock them all out and let them pick you know you know my graphic designer and all them pick what they want afterwards but we'll just go ahead and make sure we get all of them covered um yeah because usually it's rare that it's just one 
that's that's more like the competition with the raviolis and actually i've done that one twice if i can i can find he wanted to change the plate so i have another version of that with a different plate oh, that i had to do because <laughs> he wanted to change the plate on me um so but yeah i would say it's about at least five um and when it comes to like the ones i showed you for that was the very basic with the sandwich and the fruit and all mm-hmm. i mean that one that's like up 25 30 or more so yeah. that's why it's so simple that's why i'm like okay yeah we're just this is for behind the house it's for you know catalog they can cut it out and put it with graphics later if they want or something uh yeah. so i just keep it very simple in out in out in out. and it's also that way for because we have grubhub system here too mm-hmm. so the students can order off grubhub so the same thing with grubhub i'm like okay they have to do an entire shop's menu we're just plain backdrop we're just getting it in and out in and out moving on yeah so. yeah awesome well I, do you have this this is kind of selfishly for me i would love to see some video of you doing a photo shoot behind the scenes what working through your thought process <laughs> like lighting everything do you have anything like that uh, I don't ha- currently have anything like that, but I can maybe work on something for you. I think that would be awesome. I would be very interested to see kind of just your workflow, um, talking about, you know, why you're moving things, what you're doing to adjust things, what you're seeing. I think that'd be awesome. I think yeah. that would do, uh, do really well <clears throat> at some point. But anyway, any any other questions before we close up here? I just really enjoyed seeing um, process too, like to see such like beautiful, incredible images and you're just like on a dining hall table and stuff like bonkers. Yeah, like it's really, really incredible work. So thanks for like sharing both like the finished product and then like um, Nate said, kind of being able to see some of the behind the scenes is really insightful. Yeah, thank you. Amen. Yeah, absolutely absolutely loved it so cool to see the the behind the scenes and working in the spaces uh michael has a question this might be one of the more important questions uh, do you get to eat any of the food sometimes i do yeah it depends on what what it is and how fast the uh the shoot goes i i do get a chance to eat some of it <laughs> awesome awesome uh, well, glad to, glad to have you here, Darren. Glad that you're a part of the group. And thank you so much for taking the time to give us a little look into your work, your workflow, and uh, teach us some good tips and tricks. So thank you so much. And uh, look, forward, look forward to hearing from you again and, and seeing your work continue to progress. And so thanks again. Yeah, and, thank you guys. Uh, Yeah, thanks everybody for coming today and we'll see you next time or if there isn't the next time, we'll see you at the symposium.